How does wireless work? Wireless communication develops at high rate. Wireless, however, is not a new invention. In 1864, Maxwell proved the existence of electromagnetic waves. In 1887, Hertz sent and received wireless waves. In 1895, Marconi sent radio signals over more than a mile. In 1920, there was a first commercial radio broadcast. In 1930, BBC began television experiments. In 1974, FCC allocates 40 MHz for cellular telephony. In 1982, European GSM was established. This is where we can say that modern wireless communication began. Where can we find wireless now? It is used mostly for broadcasting or communication in radio, television, satellites, Wi-Fi and mobile networks such as 3G, 4G or 5G. But wireless can be used not only to transmit the data. For example, radars are based on waves. Where does exactly wireless start? First, we need a device called a transmitter which has an antenna. Inside transmitter there is an oscillator that is connected to the antenna. Oscillator creates signal that propagates through the wires to the antenna. Antenna is a conductor, so signal propagates further towards the end of the antenna. Oscillator generates signal continuously and antenna repeats that signal into the air as an electromagnetic wave. Signal in the antenna is an electric current, while propagate signal is a wave. Depending on how fast signal is changing, antenna radiates signal of different frequencies. These frequencies can be used for different purposes like radio navigation, maritime mobile, radio location, broadcasting such as FM radio, mobile communication, ISM band where everyone can transmit, satellite and space research. In order to communicate using wireless, we need more than just a transmitter with an antenna. Signal radiated by the antenna goes into the channel which transports the information and finally reaches the receiver. In order to capture the data, a receiving antenna is required which intercepts the radio waves and convents them back to the current. Transmitter is more than just an oscillator. We don't want to send constant sine wave but rather have some digital data to transmit. This data is encoded, which means additional bits are appended. This makes data recovery easier in the receiver. Transmitter cannot send zeros and ones directly and that's why they are mapped into symbols. Signals with different frequencies and amplitude. In the end, signal is modulated in order to use carrier frequency designed for a specific system. There are several ways how information can be included in the signal. Let's assume we want to send 6 bits 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1. Using amplitude modulation, we can transmit low amplitude sign for 0 and high amplitude sign for 1. Not only amplitude can be modified to carry information. In phase modulation, we alter phase from 0 to 180 degrees. In this case, we achieve constant amplitude, which is desired in many transmitters. We can also use different frequencies for different symbols. Signal does not have rapid changes of values as in case of phase modulation. In channel, signal can be distorted or attenuated. Let's see in a little bit more details what effects can be distinguished in a radio channel. First of all, there is a path loss, which is a power decrease with the distance. Then, wave can reflect from big objects like buildings. On the sharp edges, waves can diffract. Smaller objects can be source of scattering. Those effects combined cause multipath channel. Single signal can travel via different paths and still reach the receiver. But the receiving antenna gathers not only desired signal, but also signals transmitted by other devices. Those are called interference. Moreover, the receiver itself creates thermal noise, which additionally distorts signal. Correct reception of such signal is not a trivial task. But what happens with the transmitted power? Why does it reduce with the distance? In order to answer this question, imagine the dough. At the beginning it's rather small but thick. Let's roll the dough and see what happens. It's getting bigger but at the same time thinner. 
It gets thinner and thinner as long as we roll it, but the area is bigger. Through all that time, the amount of dough didn't change. Same applies to the transmitted power. At the beginning, the transmitted power is contained in a small bubble. If the receiver is close to the transmitter, it can capture a lot of power. But when the signal propagates further and further, the same power has to cover a larger area, just like the dome. Far from the transmitter, the receiving antenna can capture only a small fraction of total power. So far we considered the device sending data to another one. But in real life this is quite a rare case to send data only in one direction. In most cases we expect some answer. So devices must work in both directions. This is called duplexing. How can we achieve such communication? One way to achieve this is to divide time into slots and use them for communication in one direction and some of them in the other direction. We can arrange slots in different ways depending if we want to send or receive more data. Another way to achieve duplexing is using different frequencies that do not interfere with each other. We can find an analogy to men and women talking on different pitches. They can talk simultaneously for a long time. Luckily, machines can easily listen on one frequency while talking on different. Unlike most of us. Talking in two directions is just the first step towards complexity. In real life we have more than two devices which want to communicate. Imagine network with four devices and an access point. Every device wants to send data to the access point. In order to better visualize this process, we will replace devices with people and access points with a listener. How can we arrange communication so that people do not interfere with each other while talking to the listener? The first scenario is similar to time duplexing. This time, in time division multiple access, we divide time into slots where each user has its opportunity to speak, one after another. When the last person turn is over, the whole process repeats. In frequency division multiple access, everyone is using his own frequency so that they do not interfere with each other. By using different pitch, they can transmit their data continuously. Last scenario we will discuss is based on carrier sensing. Let's assume that Mike is already speaking to the listener. John has a great idea and would like to share it with the listener. In this approach he must check if there is someone else speaking. If he can hear someone, then he waits for the opportunity to jump in. When Mike is done talking, John shares his idea. In the meantime, Paul decided to say something, but the same rule applies to him. This is called listen before talk. First, you must be sure that you won't interrupt anybody who is already speaking. When the channel is free, Paul can start talking. This is somehow related to the TDMA because we split time for different users. Unlike TDMA, users can occupy different duration depending on the amount of data to send. Moreover, the order of transmission depends on having data to transmit. If user has some data to transfer before others, he can start his transmission. Just like Paul, who decided that he didn't say enough. These three schemes do not cover full variety of multiple access methods, but provide good overview of how different users can use the same medium. Thanks for watching. In order to follow this topic, you can check out wireless networking fundamentals track. Or you can go back to how does switch work.